water is stored inside these tanks before it goes into the factory to get its bubbles. But where does the water come from? The water comes from this spring, where rainwater has collected underground for thousands of years. It bubbles up to the surface and is sent through pipes into the factory. And it's sent to something called a chiller. The chiller cools down the water so that it's nice and cold before it gets put into bottles. But the water inside the chiller looks like this. It's still, which means it doesn't have any bubbles. It's not fizzy like this one. So how does still water become fizzy water? It's time for some bubbles. Water is made fizzy by these two tanks. This tank is called a carbonation tank. It makes the water fizzy by pushing a gas called carbon dioxide into the water. Here's how it works. Water contains a gas called oxygen. To make the water fizzy, we need to remove the oxygen. Inside the tank is a metal plate with holes in it, like a sieve. The holes are so small that as the water squeezes through them, the oxygen gas escapes. The mixture is getting lovely and smooth, and the metal arm makes sure that it's light and has lots of air in it. When the mixing is finished, it's poured into another container. <laughs> the finished mixture is called batter, and it's just like the batter you use to make pancakes. Look at the way it's just splatting into this big tank. And now we're off to the cone making machine. Batter has been hooked up to the machine and we're ready to go. The batter is pushed along this blue pipe and into this metal moving arm. And at the end is a nozzle which squirts out five blobs of batter onto this hot moving plate. The five blobs of batter look a little bit like a flower at the beginning. Moving hot plate is really special because it's got lots of little squares cut into it and that's what gives the ice cream cones that crisscross pattern and it's called a waffle pattern. Have you ever wondered how popcorn works? Why and how does it pop? Let's find out. How does it work? Popcorn! When we eat popcorn, it looks like this. Soft, white and fluffy. They look a bit like little clouds, don't they? But it starts out like this, as pieces of corn that we call kernels. But to turn this into popcorn, we need to cook it so that it gets hot. This is microwave popcorn, and inside the bag are lots of kernels of corn, like the ones I've just shown you. And we're going to cook it inside the microwave. You might even cook popcorn like this at home. Remember, you should always get a grown-up to help you use the microwave. Nothing's happening yet, but that's because we need to wait for those kernels of corn to get really hot. It smells really good already, though. Can you hear that? The corn has started to pop, turning it into popcorn. <laughs> Do 
Do you like pasta? I love all the different shapes and sizes from small tubes to little shells. And of course, spaghetti. But what's in pasta and how is it made? Let's find out. How is it made? Pasta. It all starts with a giant pasta making machine. And we're going to find out how dried pasta like this is made. This is a pasta factory, and all these machines mean it's very noisy. In this factory, pasta is made from two ingredients, water and something called semolina. This is semolina here. It looks like a yellow powder, but it's made from a type of wheat called durum wheat that grows in fields. It's also used to make some breakfast cereals. But when you mix water and semolina together, you get pasta. But we're gonna need a lot more semolina than this. These huge tanks are full of semolina. Each one can hold about 150 tonnes worth. That's the same as about 150 cars. But how does all that semolina get from the tanks to inside the factory? Yogurt is made from milk, cream, some milk powder and a bit of sugar. And once they're mixed together, they get sent onto the next part of the factory. The next stage happens in here and it's very noisy. Look at all those pipes. All the ingredients that have now been mixed together are heated up. This is called pasteurization and it gets rid of any bad bacteria that could be in the milk. Once it's reached the right temperature, the pasteurised mixture is moved into one of these. They're called incubation tanks, and they are huge. Now, a special ingredient is added, and it will turn the milky mixture into yoghurt. This special ingredient is called a starter culture, and it's made of a mix of good bacteria. Bacteria has to be kept in the freezer because as soon as it gets warm and is put in the incubator, it starts to multiply. The starter culture is added to the yogurt and then left to get to work. And when it's added to the milky mixture inside this incubation tank, it starts to multiply. How does a cake work? Let's find out. How does it work? Mm, a cake. To show you how a cake works, I'm going to bake a cake for the party. Now I need to mix all of our ingredients together in a big bowl. In goes the sugar with the flour, and then the butter. And now for the fun bit, cracking the eggs. And the milk. Oh, and we mustn't forget this. This is called baking powder, and it's a special ingredient that will make sure our cake rises in the oven. Now we need to mix all our ingredients together. And for that, we need an electric whisk. Watch this. Because it works really quickly, it's going to put lots of air bubbles into the mix. Listen to the sound of the electric whisk. It's like an aeroplane taking off. Okay, have a look in my bowl now. Can you see that all of the different ingredients have been mixed together into a smooth, runny mixture? The 
toothpaste ingredient arrive at the factory in lorries like this one. It's called a tanker and it looks a bit like a tube of toothpaste, doesn't it? This tanker is full of something called silica that looks like this, a white powder, and it gets pushed through the tubes way up into the factory. As well as silica, there are other ingredients to be used. And they have quite complicated names like xanthan gum or trisodium citrate dihydrate. Try saying that quickly. The first thing is they're all taken to a giant mixer. <laughs> and this is it. All of the ingredients are mixed together in this giant tank to make a paste that we call toothpaste. But it's not quite ready yet. The toothpaste travels from the mixture all the way along these pipes into these big silver pots where some of the toothpaste gets its colour. We have red and blue. And look, you can even see some of the red and blue dye around the machine. Once the colour has been added, all the toothpaste gets pushed through these pipes that go down into the floor. Where do you think it goes next? It comes through the ceiling to the floor below, through these pipes. One pipe is carrying red toothpaste, the other blue toothpaste, and the last one, white toothpaste. Do you know how a toilet is made? Let's find out. How is it made? A toilet. We'll start here in an enormous toilet factory. This busy factory makes over 1,500 toilets a day. Toilets are made from this. It's called clay. But it's not like the stuff you play with. This is a runny liquid. Clay comes from the ground and it's used to make lots of different things. Like a bowl you can eat your breakfast from, a plant pot, or a piggy bank. It's being poured through this pipe into this huge tank. It's being swirled around to stop any lumpy bits. It looks a bit like a muddy shower, doesn't it? Next, it goes into another tank where it's bounced around. This bouncing around is called vibration. The clay is shaking around so much, it smooths out in small bumps and bumps. I've got my special camera with me so I can get up close to the clay and show you what it looks like. Here it goes. side of a police car starts off like an ordinary white car. If it wasn't for the blue light on top, you wouldn't even know this was a police car. But all that's about to change with lots of these. And here the reflective material is cut into all the stickers that are needed for the police car. The machine uses a special cutter. Fast. Jake is popping out all of the different pieces from the sheet of material and then he's going to take them over to be stuck on the car. But how do you think he's going to stick them on? Well, all of those different shapes and strips have a sticky back. They're just like giant stickers. Reflective stickers are made in layers. The first layer is made of a shiny clear plastic called acrylic. A stamp is used to press pyramid shapes called prisms into the acrylic. The layer of prisms is laid upside down onto another piece of acrylic. In just one centimeter, there are 5,000 prisms. Houses and buildings are made with lots of bricks. The brick 
bricks are built into walls that hold up the roof and keep out the rain and wind, helping us to stay warm and safe. They have to be very strong and last a long time. But do you know how bricks are made? Let's go and find out. How is it made? A brick. Well, to make a brick, you have to start off in a place like this. It's called a quarry. A quarry is a place where we dig in the ground for things like rock or sand. This digger is digging for something used to make bricks. Clay. This is clay. It's found underground and it's full of water, which makes it all squishy. <laughs> Just listen to the sound. All squelchy and soft. Clay can be squished into all sorts of shapes and it's used to make lots of different things. Clay makes dinner plates, plant pots. You might have even used clay yourself. Look, I've turned some clay into a little man. As well as clay, bricks are made from this, sand. wood is going to be used to make an insect hotel, like this one. This is Rory and he's going to be using this big green machine. It's called a plane. A plane is a bit like a giant potato peeler. As Rory pushes the piece of wood through the plane, it peels off the top layer just like potato skin. It means he can get the wood to just the right thickness for the insect hotel. Next, Rory cuts the wood to the right length using a saw. Now, Rory uses a different saw, which is on a slope, so he can cut the ends at angles. Rory's fixing the three pieces of wood together using screws and an electric screwdriver. He's also adding an extra piece of wood in the shape of a triangle to make the back. Now the frame is made smooth with a sander, and then it's painted with wood stain to protect it from the rain. So the frame is ready, but what about all the bits that go on the inside? Well, first, we need a block of wood for all the insects to crawl into. But for that, we need to make them some hiding places. Tricycles are great fun. They're a bit like bicycles, except they have three wheels instead of two. And that helps you to balance. Off I go. But do you know how a tricycle is made? Let's find out. How is it made? A tricycle. To see how a tricycle is made, I've come here. Inside that workshop, they make lots of tricycles, some for grown-ups and some for children. Let's go see how one's made. To make a tricycle, first the mechanics open up this box. And can you believe that all the parts needed to build one tricycle fit inside? Over to you, Scott. There are 25 parts to this tricycle, and they're all different shapes and sizes. Can you guess what some of them are going to be? This is one of the pedals, the part you push with your feet to turn the wheels. And what about this? Well, these are the handlebars, the bit you hold with your hands. And what about this one? This is called the saddle, and it's the bit you sit on. A hot air balloon. Hot air balloons are really big. They 
they have a basket for people to ride in and a huge balloon which lifts the basket high into the sky. And this is where they're made. Yes, this is a hot air balloon factory. And that is a lot of material. The material is called nylon and it arrives in the factory in big rolls. So how does all this become a balloon? First, the material needs to be cut into smaller pieces with a small round cutter. Here it is. It fits inside the machine, just here. Let's see it cut the material into smaller pieces using my special camera. With my special camera in place, it's time to turn the machine on. The cutter is programmed by a computer to cut the strips into the right size. It moves along really fast. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. But believe it or not, that is cutting the material into smaller pieces. First, Sean is putting a nice soft layer around my arm and it looks like a big long sock. There's even a little sock for my thumb. Next, Sean is wrapping my arm in padding. This will make the bandage really comfortable. It's lovely and soft. Now it's time for the bandage, and there are lots of different colours you can choose from. I've gone with blue. First, Sean has dipped the bandage in water, and that's made it easy to work with. And it's sticky, so it sticks to itself as it's being wrapped around my arm. <gasps> it does feel really warm. It's a lovely, cosy, snuggly feeling. And the bandage sets really quickly. That means it goes hard, and that's what will protect my bone and help it to get better. Oh, that's so, such a strange feeling. Sean smooths the cast out and then he's finished. My arm feels really protected and safe. I love the colour too. You can have all sorts of colours. Red, green, how about pink? it made. A woolly hat. Your woolly hat starts off in a place like this, a sheep farm. And that's because the wool that makes your woolly hat actually comes from a sheep's coat. And there are a lot of sheep here. There we go. <laughs> is Lewis and he's going to show us how you get wool from a sheep. The first thing Lewis does is to clip the woolly coat off the sheep and to do that he uses this, it's called a shear, to do something called shearing. The sheep are sheared one by one. The sheep is held very still and Lewis snips away quickly so that all the woolly coat is cut off. A shear is a bit like a pair of scissors. Can you see, Lewis is using it to cut the wool off the sheep, but it doesn't hurt the sheep at all. It's just like having a haircut. Can you hear the sound of the shears? What does it sound like? I think it sounds just like a small engine. The work 
workers here are building a new road called a motorway. Motorways are really big roads and lots of cars and lorries travel on them. Have you been on a motorway? You should never play on a building site, but we've been given special permission to see how a road is made. First, a big digger arrives. It's called an excavator, and it works to dig up the soft ground ready for the road to be laid. Just look how much soil they're digging up. And can you hear it creaking as it scoops up the dirt, lifts it high in the air, and then dumps it in the back of the bulldozer? A lot of digging, the workers are ready to start building the road. First, a big truck arrives and delivers gravel. Now that is a lot of gravel. I love the way the truck tips it all the way up in the air. I've got some gravel here. It's made of lots of little stones and the workers need to spread it all over the area where the road is going to be made. Drums are great fun, but do you know how they're made? Let's go find out. How is it made? A drum! We're in a drum factory. And making a drum begins with this. Here we have lots of very thin slices of wood. It's called veneer and it's the first thing we need to make a drum. Come with me and I'll show you how this turns into this. For each drum, lots of layers of veneer are stuck together with a thin layer of glue. This makes the drum nice and strong. The glued together pieces of wood are now taken to a special machine that keeps them nicely pressed together while they dry. And now our thin sheets of wood are ready to be made into a drum. But can you see the wood is still really bendy? That's important because a drum is round, so our wood needs to be able to bend into a round shape. Listen to that wibbly wobbly sound. Doesn't it sound funny? How is it made? Table. To make a wooden table, you need a big tree, and you find those in a forest. All wood comes from trees. This machinery is cutting the trees down so the wood can be used to make things. These trees are about a year old. This one is nearly five and look, it's bigger than me. But finally, they'll grow to be this big. This is a special forest and every time a tree is cut down, a new one is grown in its place. That way we'll always have lots of wood to make new things, like a wooden table. is a busy factory where these furniture makers turn wood into brilliant things we can all use. Like a front door, a stool you can sit on, or a toy you can play with. We're going to see how a table just like this one in a drawing is going to be made. Let's find out. How is it made? Soft play. To find out, I've come here to a soft play factory. <laughs> they make lots of soft play items here. They come in different shapes and sizes, lots of different bright colours, and of course, they're all soft, even the floor. 
Let's see how they make the floor. Like all the soft play items made here, the floor pads start off with this. It's a material called PVC. It's really shiny, isn't it? This is Sarah, and she's going to cut out all the pieces we need to make a floor pad. She starts by drawing a big square on the PVC. This will be the top of the floor pad. The square is then cut out. Listen to the sound of the scissors. Next, Sarah cuts out the bottom of the floor pad. And then the sides. Once all the pieces have been cut out, they need to be sewn together. And that happens here. Maria is going to use a sewing machine to sew all the pieces together. 